Hello there, this is Achilles Drill, where nailing success gets simplified. Welcome to my lecture today, where I'll walk you through some common neuroanatomy steeplechase questions associated with the inferior view of the brain. So in this section, we'll be looking at the brain from the inferior view, and then we'll treat some common questions that can be thrown at you in your steeplechase. Let's get straight to work. Alright, so take a look at this beautiful picture here. Of course, this picture is showing the inferior view of the brain. Uh, let me get your orientation right. Certainly, this is the frontal part of the brain, the frontal lobe, and then to the side right here are the temporal lobe, which is certainly connoting the lateral part of the brain. And of course, take a look at these beautiful cerebellar hemispheres. That's sure connoting the posterior aspect of the brain. So, in this view, we are looking at the brain from the inferior aspect. And you can take a look at this mess of structures right here, the interpeduncular fossa. A number of structures can be pinned around that region and you'll be asked to identify them. Don't worry, I'll walk you through it gradually and at the end of this lecture you'll be able to identify numerous structures along the inferior view of the brain. Take a look at this. In this specimen, you can see some structures right here have been pinned along the inferior view of the brain and you'll be asked to identify some of these structures. Uh, get your orientation right to you. This is the frontal part and to the back here is the posterior part. In recent, the two cerebellum we sit in this part of the brain. Okay, so but we'll come back to this picture and then we we'll identify the structure that are pinned in that particular picture. Like always, we'll start with some common gyri around the inferior view of the brain. Some common gyri that you that can be pinned and you'll be asked to identify them. Starting with number one here. Do you know what structure is one here? This gyrus right here, okay? It's actually a part of the frontal lobe, of course. We've mentioned that gyrus in our second session in which we treated um, some common questions along the mid sagittal view of the brain. Do you know what gyrus that is? That's actually the gyrus rectus. Well, this one will make much more sense to you. Do you remember this beautiful picture from our last slide? Of course, this is the gyrus rectus from the mid sagittal view, okay? We discussed this in our last class. Right, that gyrus rectus too can be pinned along the inferior view of the brain. If you see this maybe in your exam and you have this gyrus right here pinned, that is actually the gyrus rectus and it is very much associated with cognition and um, it is somewhere of course on the frontal lobe of the brain. Right? So that's the gyrus rectus right there. Coming to our next slide, um, still the gyrus rectus, we already recognize that. How about the part libet 2? What structure? Is libet two here. Let me get your orientation right though. Um, let's take a look at this picture in our next slide before we get to that. Okay, you should be familiar with this picture from our lecture on the on some common um, neuroanatomy stipulates question from the superior lateral view of the brain. Okay, you remember in that lecture we talked about this inferior frontal gyrus and then we made emphasis on some common ones right here. We mentioned the pass orbitalis most anterior here and then we also mentioned the pass triangularis in the middle right here and certainly the pass opacularis which is most posterior. And then remember these structures are very much associated with the broca speech area. So in front here is the pass orbitalis and that's actually the part labeled two in our previous picture let's go back to it all right um on this picture you can see the pass orbitalis is right here okay and it is associated with language processing as well the one in one is gyrus rectus the one that's lateral to it is the pass orbitalis are we good all right well, let's go to our next slide now now you could be asked to identify some other gyros still along this inferior view of the brain. Let's identify number three and four. Let me leave you to guess it first. What gyros do you think this is? The one, the most media part, or should I say the media most part of the temporal loop. Do you know what structure that is? Uh, yeah, that's actually the uncus. Uh, in case you're hearing it for the first time, yes, that's the uncus. Let's use a better picture on uh, my next slide. Uh, it has been um, designated different color here. The green structure right here, the mediumus part of the temporal lobe right there, is the uncus of the parahippocampal gyrus. Okay, the thing is, get it right. Everything here is the parahippocampal gyrus. Let me use a red pen for that. This is a parahippocampal gyrus, but it has a 
hook-like structure. I like to connote it like a hook-like structure, and it is commonly pinned in your stiff chairs. So that's actually the uncus of the parahippocampal gyrus. So that's if you want to be very much specific, you say the uncus of the parahippocampal gyrus. But everything there is the para in Pocampa gyrus alone and just lateral to it do you know what structure this is the one in green here where you've probably not heard of that structure before that is the occipital tempora gyrus okay it's actually associated with face recognition object recognition and all right and we have this yellow and beautiful inferior tempora gyrus right there are you familiar with that um, let me show you a picture from our last class. You remember this picture when we were talking about the parts of the temporal um, lobe? And then we mentioned the superior temporal gyrus, mid to temporal gyrus, inferior temporal gyrus. So this inferior temporal gyrus is actually what we have as yellow in the other slide. Can we go back to it? The one in yellow here is simply the inferior temporal gyrus. Are we good with recognizing some important gyri around the inferior view of the brain can we go over it quick revision are you set for that all right as i'm pointing my arrow recognize them one by one we've discussed all this before so it won't be so new to you now what is the gyros here remind me the gyros rectus you're doing great how about the gyros just lateral here of course that's the word pass orbitalis the pass orbitalis okay it's very much associated with um language processing as well how about this um, hook-like structure? Remind me what it is. That's the uncus. The uncus. The uncus of the parahippocampal gyrus, if we are to be very specific. Everything else is the parahippocampal gyrus. How about the one just lateral to it? Remind me what structure that is. That is what, again, the occipital temporal gyrus. All right. Very much associated with facial recognition. How about just lateral to it? Remind me the inferior temporal gyrus. You are doing great, okay? So now let's go to our next uh, thing around this inferior view of the brain. If I'm to ask you, what structure is an arrow pointing to here as one? Do you know what structure that is? That is the olfactory bulb. The olfactory bulb, right? So the olfactory bulb to it continues posteriorly towards the back as the olfactory tract. Now, students make a lot of mistake around here. They regard the structure as two here. Let me erase all this mess. Let's take it gradually. The one with the first arrow is the olfactory bulb. Now, it continues towards the back as a tract called the olfactory tract. Now, some students in their um, Stibuches uh, exam, they mistake the olfactory tract for the olfactory nerve. Now, this is not the olfactory nerve. Let me walk you through a little anatomy here. Right? Do you remember this beautiful picture? Maybe from your uh, gross anatomy. Uh, the olfactory nerve, there are about 15 to 20 of them. Let me get my beautiful pen. There are about 15 to 20 of them passing through the cribiform plate of the um, ethmoid bone right here. And then they are synapsing with some other structures within the olfactory bulb. This is the one that was labeled one earlier, okay? And then towards the back, it continues as what? The olfactory tract. This was the one that was labeled as two, okay? So that structure is actually the tract, not the nerve. In recent, the nerve are somewhere within the superior meatus of the uh, of the nasa cavity right there. And they are functioning for, for perception of smell and all, right? So take note of that important point. The structure you are having here the one as one right here is the olfactory bulb. Why the one as two to the back right here is what? The olfactory tract. And it is commonly pinned in your steeple chase exam and you'll be asked to identify it. And just a quick one, just a quick one. Remind me what is three right here. This look like structure. Remind me what it is. Of course, that is the honkos, right? And now, um, some other structures are around here that you could be asked to identify. And they are somewhere in the midline right here. It's a mess of structure. And students are always confused on whatever is with whatever they are. But let's just take it gradually, okay? The first one that I want to draw your attention to is the olfactory nerve. Normally, the olfactory nerve is coming from the two high balls somewhere around here. And it is coming here. It is coming here. It is coming here. And then somewhere in the middle right here, it is forming a chiasma, okay? Opticism or opticism, they mean the same thing. And then to the back, it is continuing as olfactory tract. Okay, so it means any 
um, tract or any nerve-like structure pinned just before the chiasm. For example, if this region is pinned before the chiasm, that is the optic nerve, okay? Optic nerve. But if the structure in the midline itself right here, the one right here with the light blue, if that one is pinned, that is what? That is the optic chiasm itself, okay? Why if the tract, the one just posterior to it, if it is pinned, you have to recognize as the optic tract. They are different structures. You don't call everything the olfactory nerve. They are, they are independent. You have to recognize which is the nerve, the one that is anteriorly located, which is the chasm, the way everything is kind of synapsing, all right? And then the one that is the tract, the one finding its way to towards the occipital part of the brain, okay? So it's finding its way to the, um, to the, to the lateral geniculate of the thalamus, and then from there, via the optic radiation, it's going to synapse somewhere on the visual area of the occipital lobe. Right, that's just a little anatomy, but what we're interested in is some common steeplechase questions. Okay, another one I want to draw your attention to is these two bumps of structures, these are the mammary bodies. Now, I don't like this picture, it's kind of darkened in that region. Let me show you a textbook picture around here. Okay, um, take a look at this. So, I was drawing your attention to what again the um, mammary bodies, there are actually some structures around there. Okay. They are, they are like they are like the terminal point for the phonics the phonics um um coming all the way that we talked about i don't know we've not mentioned it though but you can check out our lectures on corona section through the brain and as well as um the corona section through the brain we talked about the phonics so it's actually terminating somewhere on the mammary bodies so that mammary body they can be pinned to and you'll be asked to identify them are you familiar with what this is this is the pituitary gland uh, let me get a zoomed in picture for this i'm not too satisfied with this picture right here take a look at this okay so we are zooming in to, to the interpeduncular fossa all right what we're having right here let's zoom into it and bring it out okay so that's what we want to do in this next slide so yeah here we are okay remember this is certainly some part of the olfactory tract okay and then we have this as the optic chasm and actually immediately posterior to the optic chasm is one beautiful endocrine gland the pituitary gland okay the pituitary gland is actually removed here though but we can see a portion of the pituitary stalk closely associated with the tuber cinereum is actually right there in recent the pituitary gland will sit somewhere yes okay so although in this picture it is it is cut out already although the structure itself that is there is now what we refer as the tuber cinereum okay and it is joining to the hypothalamus in recent, if we continue to dig deeper, we we'll actually encounter the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus has some important structures around there, all right? So, but then from what we can see in the inferior view is the tuber cinereum right here. And here are the mammary bodies I was talking about. That structure can be pinned, and I really want you to take note of it. Are we good? All right. So now, apart from that, something as basic as the... Um, Brainstem can even be pinned and you'll be asked to identify them. Okay, so let me erase this mess. Um, something as basic as the pons can be pinned. What structure is this? Certainly the pons. Um, then the medulla itself too can be pinned and you'll be asked to identify the medulla. Even something as basic as the lobes, the lobes of the brain too, can be pinned and you'll be asked to identify them. For example, this is the temporal, these are the temporal lobes. And this is the frontal lobe. Most commonly asked is also the occipital lobe. So when you have to just identify this, these are common questions along the inferior view of the brain. Okay, so is there anything we are leaving out? Now let's come to this specimen right here. I'm going to get my pen. Take a look at this. Some structures have been pinned around here. And let's just use it in form as a quick revision. Although it's not too defined, but let's just make do with it. You can see somewhere here, um, the occipital lobe has been pinned. You can see the two cerebellum sitting there. The two cerebellar hemispheres they are seated right there and in recent this uh, pin is actually going into the cvm fissure okay so can you see something as basic as those can even be had along the inferior view of the brain okay so let's just uh, leave those out for now okay can you come back to this slide um and let's do a quick summary across all we've discussed in the course of this lecture Right, I'll be pointing my arrow and I will ask you to identify them one by one. What gyrus is this? Remind me. Gyrus rectus. How about to decide what gyrus is located somewhere here? 
we actually have the pass of Italy somewhere around there. The pass of Italy is, is right there. Okay, how about the structure Libet 1, the olfactory bulb? Okay, how about the one Libet 2, the tract, the olfactory tract, right? And then the structure Libet 3 is certainly the oncus, oncus, okay? And we even mentioned some other gyros too around here. We talked about the what? The occipital temporal gyros right here. The um, gyros on which the oncus is located is called the parahippocampal gyros. If you can remember the oncus, just go with the parahippocampal gyros. The oncus is just the hook-like part of this parahippocampal gyros. And yes, this is the what again? The occipital temporal gyros. And just lateral to it is the inferior temporal gyros of the temporal loop. Are we good? And that brings us to the end of this section on some common steeplechase questions associated with the inferior view of the brain. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you find the video helpful, do it to hit the like button and subscribe. Subscribe. A number of us have not subscribed. Just do it to hit the subscribe button. And yes, there is a virtual quiz I designed for you uh, just to consolidate all we've treated there along the inferior view of the brain. Uh, the link is down there in the description box. Hit it and then it refers you to the virtual steeplechase session. It will sure help you. All right. Thank you for tuning in.